From Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of the radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I done our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. What is it about compromise and relationships? Marriage is all about compromise. To have a successful relationship, you have to be able to compromise. No, you don't. No, you don't. You have to be able to talk it out. You have to be able to negotiate to get what you want. No, you don't. No. No negotiating. No compromising. No arguing. Zero tolerance. If she wants to do those things, you have to, you have to firmly plant uh, the toe of your boot into her ass cheek. You have to kick her the hell out. That's simple. No one's going to tell me what friends to have, what to do when I'm with my friends. No one's going to tell me where to go on vacation or where my house should be located. Nobody is going to tell me how much money I have to spend on them. No one's going to do it. There will be no compromise. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Greg on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Hey, man, I'm a perfect example of do not compromise even once. Once you do, it's a constant. The whole rest of the relationship is what she considers compromise, but in all reality is just giving in to every one of her whims and desires. Um, I was 34, 33 years old, had my own house in Vegas, had a decent job, had uh, six weeks off in the summer, six weeks off in the winter. I'm a musician, so I could go tour with my friends and um, just hang out. Um, made about 40 grand a year. Um, so to supplement some of the income, I was kind of selling weed on the side and doing okay with that, too. Had a nice little thing going. Um, met a girl that became a decent client of mine, actually, uh, which is kind of funny in the long run. But um, beautiful, beautiful girl. Big old fake boobs, the nice car, $100,000 a year job. She could take care of herself. You know, independent woman. So I thought this was going to be perfect. Um, we started kind of dating, and within three months it started. I don't like all the traffic at your house, and you can never come to my house because you always have to be home to take care of things. And... Um, you know, I thought, man, never been married. I'm watching all my friends get married. Everybody seems happy. So I thought, you know what, maybe life is about some compromise here. So I said, all right, I will. So I closed up shop and uh, took quite a quite a chunk, you know, out of the yearly income. But that was okay. She made a good living. She was throwing around some money at the time. It was all good to go. Um, within a year, my house was too far away. And uh, there was no sense in me driving all the way out there when I worked closer to her. So why don't we just sell my house? And she was in the mortgage industry. So, of course, she got right on helping me sell my house. Um, again, a financial loss, huge financial loss. Uh, got rid of all my furniture and moved into her house because she had big screens and she had all the stuff. Uh, things seemed to be going fine. And... Uh, then she started to not want to pay daycare for a six-year-old child anymore and, and didn't want to do homework afterwards. And why don't you just stay home since you're so good with my daughter and you guys get along? So why don't you just stay home? You know, you like to cook. And now you can just kind of lounge around the house a little bit more and be a stay-at-home guy. So next thing you know, I'm quitting my job. And now here I am doing all the cooking and cleaning and 
raising her child for her, um, gave up the music, wasn't playing any more shows anymore, wasn't going out working, no more gambling, no more hanging out with the bros for football games on Sundays, um, no more none of it. Before you know it, there wasn't even football on it at the house anymore for myself on Sundays because there was errands to do and chores and it, it, it became ridiculous. Um, and never at any point did it click with me how bad of a spiral of losing everything I was until the constant, you don't need to change your attitude and uh, I don't like the way you communicate with me. And all of that started to come on top of it. And I finally decided I can't take this anymore. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm moving back to California where I belong. I'm over it. And I scheduled two days to pack, and it took me about two hours because I had nothing left. I loaded everything I owned in the back of my truck at 36 years old in the back of a pickup and drove out here to California with nothing but pretty much my musical equipment, my clothes, and my dog. Um, so a perfect example of always stay true to yourself. Don't give in even once. Um, I lived most of my life like that, and for some reason, this devil woman came into my life, and I thought things were going to be different. Um, but now I'm on the uproad track again. You know, I don't have much stuff, but I'm living on the beach, and I get to go to the bar every day and hang out with my buddies and not have to hear anybody's mouth or slack or anything anymore. How's that feel? I feel like I'm reborn. I feel like a new man. I don't know. I mean, it reminds me of how I used to feel and how I used to live, and I don't know why I ever changed that or gave that up. It was a bad spiral. I, I say again, once you do it once, you don't even realize the spiral of your life that's about to become. you got to stand for it right off the bat. Uh, I ain't going to happen. This is me. Take it or leave it. I don't really care either way. Well, I agree with you on that. And I think it takes a long time for most men to learn how to do that. And I'll be honest, it took me a long time to learn how to do that. Well, see, you know, what's weird is I spent my, I mean, I'm 36. I've never been married. Never even thought about it. Wasn't even, are you kidding me? No way. But then all of a sudden, I don't know what it was, maybe being 31, 32, 33, you know, right around that age, watching my buddies do it. All of a sudden, it seemed like such a great idea to be in love. And, uh, and it's all just a farce. Come on, you know. So it, it's definitely a hard lesson to learn, but anybody, I wish I could have, you know, I lived here in California for years and never heard your show. Was, my timing was never there, and wish I would have caught you before I got into meeting that girl in Vegas. I understand. I, I thank you for the call. I often think about one particular girlfriend. I know that uh, after we were together, she jumped right on all the online dating services. I'm worried around town that she's met at least one other person. And I imagine that guy having to cater to her whims, being expected to buy things for her, spend money, hearing criticisms about all the things that are wrong with him, all the things he does that are wrong, all the fact that he's got bad taste. He doesn't dress right. He has bad taste in furniture, and he has bad taste in uh, everything. Somewhere out there, that guy, he may listen to me, you know, because she may have said, I'm the ex. He may be a listener. And he may be trying to figure out, you know, how did I get into this mess? Pal, I'm telling you. I was there before you. And I know how she gets and I palmed her off on you like a bad penny. You ever work in an office where there's a vending machine? Somebody palms off a Canadian quarter on you and you try to palm it off on somebody else? Because it's not the right size. Doesn't fit in the machine. Always gets uh, sent back through the coin return. This chick had been dumped by the three previous guys before me. Then I dumped her. Essentially palming her off on somebody else. I, um, I'm not jealous. I really feel for the guy out there who thinks he got so lucky getting somebody so attractive and young and all of this, not realizing that he's also getting somebody who's going to tell him that everything about him is wrong. Everything. This guy out there right now, 
who's getting that from from one of my exes. Oh, baby. Jermaine on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yeah. I could not agree more. My own boy Steve put me on your show, and I listened to three minutes, and I had to jump on the phone and call. It was uh, like that instant. Wow. I never. He told me about it, and we listened for three minutes riding home, and I was like, right, what's the number? We waited for the number to come up. I've been calling for like an hour just to get on. the This compromise thing, I agree with you 100%. For some reason, you can meet females, and they, they claim they're cool with everything. They're just like you. They like everything the same. And two or three weeks later, they start nitpicking at you about certain things that they want or certain things they don't like. And these are all things you told them that you were about, that you, that you were like right when you met them, but somehow it's like it went in one ear and right out the other. It didn't stick. For some reason, these things don't register with them. I, I, my honest opinion is, most women don't really care what you say or tell them because in the end, in the long run, all they're thinking to themselves is, I can change this guy. I can get him, you know, to cater to their will or to be, you know, exactly what they want. They don't really care. Yeah, I, I I mean, well, women are most turned on by guys who are complete jerks, complete a-holes. Yeah. I'm a son of a bitch myself and a complete a-hole. I am too, and for some reason, I mean, I'm not like that offhand just to do it on purpose. And, you know, I'm I, actually, you see what we are. I don't really consider it like being a, a jerk or nothing like that. We're just real, and a lot of women, for some reason, mistake realness for rudeness. Like you're like you're being like too too forward, too adamant. There's nothing wrong. I always want to hear 100 percent truth, 100 percent fact. I don't care what you say to me. I don't care what women like. I couldn't care less. I mean, because I'm going to be me whether you like me or not. I'm still going to be me between now and the next, like, 60, 80 years, whether you like it or not. I mean, take it or leave it. Uh, uh, another thing, me and my brother were talking about this. We don't really – I don't blame women for this because, really, if you can get away with something, why not do it? This is a lot of guys' fault. I don't see where where the change came to where guys started simping out and becoming so whipped just for women. Like, like Well, the change came – when we had the first adult generation where at least half the guys grew up with single mothers raising them. And, and you know, it's funny. I agree with that. But the weirdest part is me and my brother were raised by only our mom. I don't even know my dad. I've never seen him, never met him, anything. And I'm a man's man. Like, I don't let no woman tell me nothing. Nobody. I mean, I'm, I, I, always, I agree with you 100%. I don't compromise. I'm very headstrong. and Good for you. you know, and it's going to be a reason why I probably will be by myself my whole life, and I really don't have a problem with that. I You're going to be mind. happy. Are you kidding me? I just bought this new place. I've talked about it, and now I have it. And I spent the weekend, and I, there I was yesterday walking my 20 acres alone. No problem with that. Me and my two brothers, we oh. live here in our apartment by ourselves. No, my, my old roommate who moved out, he moved in, guess with who? His fiance. Oh, kill me now. I, I mean, I love him. He's my brother and everything, but I, I just don't. We, we always sit back sometimes and wonder, like, wow, you know, he, he's really living with a woman. Like, my, my, I don't know. The only woman I could ever live with is my mom and my sister, and that's it. I, I've never, I've never given no woman the, my PIN number, my credit card, the keys to my apartment, keys to my car. Why give them so much power? Why give them something that, I mean, what, what gave them the right to earn this? What did they do? You just make a whole lot of sense. Tom Luckis. 1 800 5800 Tom. What was that again? Were you not listening to me, sir? I couldn't hear a word you were saying. Well, oh, I couldn't hear a word that you were saying either. I see. That's great. I like the level of discourse here. It's fantastic. It's the Tom Luckis Show. Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, James. First time caller. I've been listening to you for about a half a year now. Good. And what I have to tell you is these women are vicious. 
okay, you've been through it three times. I am now going through my first divorce after 12 years of marriage and being together for 15 years. Three boys deep. And uh, what women do is yet they like you for who you are at first, and then they mold you into something you are not. And what I mean by mold is that they you become their little pet, little slave. They do it if you let them, which most guys let them. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm a fool for it. And, you know, yes, I do love her, but I, was, I wasn't I was right. And now that I'm getting out of this divorce, uh, we're going through this divorce, and I'll be free soon. Um, trying to go on with my life. I'm trying to uh, get my house refinanced so I can get some money out of it and get my own place, and we can live our simple ways. And uh, now, hopefully, you learned your lesson, and you will not ever let a woman tell you that you have to compromise. You will not exactly. ever engage in a discussion with a woman. You will not get into an argument. Right. And the minute somebody do does that, you're going to kick them the hell out. I'm not going to be ready anytime soon to be with anybody soon. You don't need to be <laughs> with anybody ever. Exactly. That's but but, that's but you know what? Getting laid is a good idea. Sure. When it's needed. Well, right now, getting my composure back. You had it whipped out of you, James. Yes, I did. Wow. Every Every bit of it. And... I tell you what, you know, like I said, women will mold you into something that you are not. And I let her do that after all these years. And oh, I tell you what, I, I I can't wait till I can be free. How did she react when you got out? I haven't. We haven't. I haven't actually left yet because right now she's <laughs> going to school. And what are you waiting for? Well, I have three boys up to take care of. Okay. Yeah. I can't just jump out and leave because of the situation of what's going on. I can't just run away until she's financially set and um, I'm able to get my home. I can't just jump out. I so you'll get to keep your home? No, I'm letting her have it. I don't care about the damn house. There's no alimony going to be. This is a, a non-alimony state for uh, Boise, Idaho. Love it. And I'm not getting out. The only thing it is is going to be child support, which I can, I don't have a problem dealing with. So I'm I'm good with that. Um, I like I said, I've listened to you for half a year now, and I love every bit of what you're talking about. And you said many things that fall in line of the life I've had with this woman. And you are you have been my what you can say my correction officer. <laughs> I love that. Now, do you, have any, do you have any boys? Yeah, I got three boys. They need to hear this show. Uh, in due time, I'd probably get my oldest to start listening to it. He's 14 right now, and I got an 11-year-old and a 6-year-old. Because the girls will start manipulating them right now. I know it. I know it. I'm glad neither one of them got a girlfriend quite yet, but, you know, who knows. But I will give them the fair warning. <laughs> That's right. I believe in you, Tom, and like I said, I've been listening to you, and I listen to you uh, every chance I get. And I love it. I had to throw my spill on about, you know, there are women out there who will mold you into something that you are not. This is what happened to this guy here. He was, you know, he lost his job. He lost his home over this woman. He gave it up. I hate when that happens. I really do. And it does happen. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Fred on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Dad, how are you? <laughs> Son, how are you? You have been my counselor, my uh, mentor, my... <laughs> wow. You're, you're helping me out a lot, man. You got to believe that. Very good. <laughs> what can I do for you? Hey, man, I was the last out of my friends to have a girlfriend. I couldn't wait to have a girlfriend, whatever, you know. So I said, let it, you know, I'm just going to sit back and let it happen. Man, I don't know if there is a God or what, man. This guy, somebody dropped this beautiful, gorgeous, out of this world girl in my arms. I was sleeping. I woke up and I met this girl at work. 
I had to take her out, whatever. I got to know her. We started going out. She became my girlfriend. Two years into it, we actually moved in, got married. And, and dude, I just got to say, there's no love. There is no love. Even though you're nice to each other, you take care of each other's needs and blah, 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 there's no love. It's all a test. It's how much you can get out of the other person. Girls especially, they, they just try to suck everything out of you. She wanted me home when she was hungry. She wanted me to be there so she can eat and be comfortable. Or else she would throw a tantrum. She would go nuts. Dude, she, this girl got animals. Five pets that I didn't even want. Five animals. And then I have to take her care of them after kicking her out. I have to, I'm stuck with those animals. <laughs> I don't know where how to keep going, man. I'm, 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 I have a million things to say. Yeah, I understand that. How did she react when you got out? Thing was, she was like complaining about being uh, homesick because she was from uh, Sweden. Blonde, blue eyes and everything. And, you know... And it wasn't, it, it, that was her excuse. And I think she wanted out because she was too young to be in a, in a relationship. Great, right. you got what you wanted. You know, the way I look at it, if they want to leave, I don't yeah. ever try to keep them. Because yeah, I, I already I, got, think about it, you've already got what you wanted. You're just pretty much hitting the same thing over and over. Exactly. I bought a condo, and we were buying a condo together. And uh, the thing was, when it came down to the paperwork, and you know, it was all me. I put it all under my name because I I listened to you. I go, you know, I'm not gonna put nobody under my, you know, nobody's gonna own anything I own or be part of it. I'm gonna own everything I I buy. So I bought the condo under my name. My sister even wanted her name to be under on the title. I said no. <laughs> you know, I got that. And she paid me rent. That's the good thing. I got her to be pay me rent while she was living with me. She we went half on everything. I made sure of that. Uh, you know, I had to try it. I got married. Uh, it didn't work out. As soon as I got married, everything spiraled downwards. You know, in a really bad spiral. And I gave her a big rock that I regretted. But she's coming back from Sweden to give me the rock. We're gonna. I love her. that. <laughs> <laughs> she's coming. She, I got rid of all her pets, and she's like, "No, you can't get rid of one of the dogs." I said, "Okay, fine." I was trying to send it to her, Tom. She was trying to make me from across the country send her the dog, plus pay her bills. She was sending me money, making it me put it in her bank, blah blah. I, you know, I got I got tired of it, Tom. I go, you know what? That's enough. And she got mad at me once for uh, putting it in her bank account late, and her uh, and her credit cards got late, and she got mad at me. You know. So I, you know, I stopped talking to her for two months, and then she calls me back. She's like, "You know what? I'm coming down to get my dog and give you your ring back." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> that works for me. It saves me a thousand bucks to go and get it myself." You know? Love it. Yeah, and and the other funny thing is, she's been gone out of my life for six months, and all of her, all of our stress was about money because, for some reason, you know what? It's not even even though I was having everything with her. It's, it's it's expensive because you want to go out, you want to go vacations, this and that. You know, if she wants to go out to places, and you have to go with her. You know, even though you pay your own half, you have to go to places she wants to go, places her friends are going, and she wants you to come. You have to pay for all those places that you don't want to go to. All right, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. That's my attitude about that. Zach, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? Good. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to call and tell you that uh, I was dating this chick that was a lot older than me, and, uh, you know, it started out as just fun, whatever, and then uh, next thing you know, I find out that she's got all kinds of problems, just cutting herself, She's she loves me one day, and the next day she's threatening to call the cops on me if she sees me, and, uh, you know, it was really hard to deal with, but, uh, you know, I'm very glad that that whole thing is is over with and uh you know i don't know what uh you know what i'm i'm sure what you would do with the whole situation and you would uh i wish i would have listened to you long ago yeah i mean uh any i i have no patience for anything anymore yeah, and there will I be wish, no I arguing wish. no threatening to kill yourself uh no crying uh no negotiating debating arguing zero tolerance Yes, it was. Uh, you do I, that, and you are out, out, out. That's it. Yes, yeah, so and now I'm. I'm just trying to to get over it. It's a little hard, but I'm. 
uh, in the long run, I'm glad it's uh, it's done with. Well, if you stop having idea. girlfriends, you'll stop having a hard time. Yes, I agree. Hit them and quit them. What was that? one 800 5800 Tom. People always say to me, they say, um, well, do you have a daughter? I, I usually tell them, I say, no, I usually have somebody else's daughter. <laughs> Sometimes twice. It's the Tom Likas Show. Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. I have put my foot down on behalf of you. You should be putting it down on your own behalf. No compromise in a relationship or a marriage. No arguing. No. Uh, there will be no debating, no discussing, no criticism or critiquing. The minute she does that, you kick her ass out the door. It's that simple. It's Al on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Al. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Got a uh, little little story for you. I was uh, engaged, got married. I'm currently still married. And uh, about six months after we were married... Took her up to New York City. We saw a play called, you know, on Broadway. That's the, I thought it was going to be dumb. It was the best thing in the world that happened to me. I love you. You're perfect. Now change was the name of it. <laughs> and it was that time in the relationship. You know, when you first start dating and you're engaged, you know, your wife's like, "Oh, I love watching football too. Oh, I love football on Sundays." And uh, you know, it turns out that's not the case. And we saw the play and. She kind of saw my point of view in that, that she thought immediately I was going to go, wanted to go shopping for drapes on a Sunday after I was married to her. Like, that's not going to change. That's not going to change a single thing. I'm always going to watch football. Um, and I'd probably pick a, pick a football game over her. Then, you know, I don't want to spend time with her on a Sunday. Yeah, I, I completely understand. So what did you do? Well, that we were having problems and and uh, getting into a lot of arguments over stuff. Um, saw the play, and then I said, "Hey, you know, think about that. Think about some things you saw. It was a comedy, but uh, there's a lot of truth to it." And uh, she just kind of—I I think she swallowed her pride. And fortunately, she's pretty cool. She doesn't hold a grudge, and and uh, she kind of accepted what I was trying to tell her. Things are great now. Two kids. Mortgage, you know, car payment, the whole thing, everything's fine. But she finally realized that, you know, I was more stubborn than she was going to be. And uh, she kind of bowed down, which I wouldn't, I'm so happy to say that that uh, now things are great. Well, I'm glad to hear that. But, uh, you know, for me, things are a lot better by just getting rid of them and keeping them at arm's length. Well, I'll wait until the kids are 18 out of the house. <laughs> How old are your kids? I have a uh, two and a half year old and uh, uh, two month old. That's a long <laughs> way away. <laughs> well, yeah, you're probably right. I can say that now, right? Well, we'll see what actually happens. You're right, Tom. You guys rock. Thank you. Appreciate the call, Jason, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing today, Tom? Great. I got one heck of a story for everybody out there, man. I had met this girl. She's 28 years old. I'm 22 years old. We end up hooking up three months into our relationship, Tom. We had a child. Meanwhile, she just moved out here. Why did you uh, do that? Because I wasn't too smart. I didn't wrap my tool, man. And, and, and by the way, uh, why did you do that? Uh... Don't ask me that question, man. I can't answer that one. Well, you <laughs> conveniently left out another salient fact, which is going to make you seem even stupider for doing that. Why don't you tell us what you left out? Uh, just being stupid, man. So. No, no, no. Uh, this woman who was 28. Yeah, with two previous kids. Two previous kids. And was she married when she had those kids? Nah, she wasn't, man. No. Yeah. So, and were they the same father? 
No, it wasn't. No! And so you knew that, yes, but I you know. had sex with her without a condom anyway. Yeah. That's how stupid you were. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's really stupid. Yeah, I was. So she added you to the list. Three kids by three different dads. And unlike the others, you were stupid enough to buy this turkey. Oh. You signed the paperwork, and now it's all yours. I, I, that is the truth right there, man. Uh, one screwed up, tr uh, one screwed up thing right there, man. Yeah. But, yeah, she she ended up going. I ended up losing my job. But times got slow out here, you know. No construction work going on, and I ended up losing my job. Well, she got smart and started going out partying every Friday night. There man. we go, Buster. <laughs> I partied all night long, man. Shut time up. time to get knocked up with the kid number four. Ah, see, that was another tricky thing. She came up and told me that she's knocked up again, dude. I didn't believe it. Oh, and you were surprised, too. Dude, I was so pissed off. I was like, man, that's not my kid. But you were surprised. And by the way, you sure the last one is your kid? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one. No, 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 You're not sure. No, I'm not sure, but heck, I'm too late now. I already signed the paternity, uh, the the paperwork, you know. Well, and how old is that kid? One years old, man. Well, you should see an attorney. Who knows? I don't know what your rights are. You ought to find out. Don't just accept that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to do that, man. Like tomorrow. And uh, come off. I can do that tomorrow on my way back from work. Tomorrow. And then also the other thing too, man. She started getting stupid, and like what we were talking, uh, what you got, you're talking about taking advantage, dude. She took advantage of me pretty bad, man. She ended up sucking up all my money, and then like I'm like, shocked. Dude, aw, and they're just bad, man. The women are just nah. You don't need them in your life, dude. <laughs> so. But anyway, she uh, she ended up going, taking all my money, dude, and then she got a job, and then she was Miss uh, Independent now, dude, blaming everything up on me, man. Yeah. Have you learned anything from this experience? Yeah, don't don't get a woman that has three, uh, two different kids by two different Why dads. do you need to have a woman at all? Exactly, dude. I had not, no reason at all, man. Did you ever find out where the condom store is? Yeah, they have them on that mobile. <laughs> yeah, but how did you knock her up again? Oh, I didn't knock her up again, dude. That I thought you funny. said she's pregnant again. Yeah, she's pregnant again, but not by my kid, man. How do you know? Because I was smart because we didn't have sex for about three months, dude. So she went out and got knocked up by somebody else. So why are you still with her? I ain't with her, dude. I'm living the single life now, man. I good buddy of mine turned me on to you, dude, and I've been listening to you ever since, man. And you get ready to knock up somebody else, right? Heck no, man. Captain Savaho is out there to knock up another person. Nah, I wrap my tool now, dude. It's about time. So, but yeah, <laughs> you're my savior, man. Bye, right, Jason. I'm glad to hear that. Holy cow. It's painful. It's freaking painful. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Here's Rick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I love that save a ho. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, you know what? I can't claim to be much smarter, <clears throat> but uh, I truly have a, a problem here. I, I, well, maybe I don't have a problem. Maybe I have a solution that, that's, that's just not bloomed yet, but I've had an epiphany while listening to you. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm 45, and uh, I, too, when, when I was about 38, decided that I'd lived all the life that I needed to live and uh, settled down with a single, <clears throat> beautiful, young <laughs> woman who'd had her uh, master's degree already. She was 35, no kids, and uh, been married once and divorced. And uh, I married her, and about uh, three months later, we got pregnant. And, uh, <laughs> you, you hear me? I'm listening to you. Okay, I, I just want to make sure you're hearing this. Oh, Lord. 
anyway, uh, so, yeah, so we had the baby, and uh, about six months after that, she started going through some depression, and I uh, took off a bunch of time uh, from work, and uh, she decided that she wanted me to start staying home closer to work, uh, closer to the house to, uh, to be closer to her and the baby, because she was worried she was going to hurt the baby or herself. Well, I worked out in El Segundo. I was an engineer for uh, an aerospace company for 23 years, and she talked me into quitting and uh, finding a job closer to home after 23 years. Gave up that career, came home, <clears throat> found a job closer to home. <laughs> I got injured on this new job. <laughs> after I got injured, all of a sudden she wasn't sick anymore, wasn't depressed, and uh, she decided to find a new life, filed for divorce, and... Uh, tried to take the baby away and claimed that I was hurting her and the baby. <laughs> After a few uh, police reports, we got through all that, went to divorce court, and the bottom line is, through the end of it, uh, I ended up retaining full custody of my son. And it is my son. <laughs> he looks just like me. And uh, anyhow, we uh, I got this, this divorce. Okay? The divorce decree was set, and we were into the disillusion, I guess they call it. And uh, at the dissolution, they basically decided that she was going to be in in, uh, in debt uh, each month to the tune of about $2,000 because I was disabled. I wasn't making as much money, and she was making a lot more. It was $2,000 a month between alimony and child support. And uh, she came running and uh, decided that she didn't want to do that, wanted to take another try, wanted to try one more time. And this is, by, by the way, after we had already lost our house and our cars and everything else. And uh, so <laughs> here's where the idiotic part comes. I said, yeah, all right, and I let her come back in. We went out and rented a house, got this house we had for about a year, and she talked me into buying another house. Now, I And why were house. you so compliant along the way here? Because I thought that the family idea was the best idea. I was the guy that grew up opening doors, you know, grew up in a broken home, wanted to make sure I gave my wife a better life than the life I had, you know, that kind of garbage. And that was it, you know. I just I thought I was doing the right things, and uh, she ended up having three affairs <laughs> within that divorce time, and uh, the court decided that that wasn't the best lifestyle for my son. I was able to prove otherwise because I was hurt, and they gave me full custody of him. Uh, now I'm in this new house that we've had for less than a year, She's barely making any payments with me here, and uh, I'm just keeping my nose above water. And uh, I still have that divorce paperwork. <laughs> Why so, haven't you gotten a divorce? That's what I, I'm just dying here because I don't know what's going to happen to the house. And, and I, I listen to you every day, Tom. I, no lie, I listen to you and Danny <laughs> every day. And I've been listening to you for a long time, and I just keep thinking, oh, I just don't want to lose another house. You know, the first house was mine outright. This one's both of ours. I keep thinking I'm going to lose this house, too, and then I don't want to destroy the kid by not having his mom in the picture. But, oh, hey, oh yeah, I know. I know it. I'm an idiot. I, I'll say it on on the air. I'm an idiot. But what do I do? Honest to God, what do I do? Now you ask me what to do? <laughs> I know. Now? You wait till now. I'm sorry for... I've been here all along. Where have you been? <laughs> Stab me in the eye with a fork, will you? Are you kidding me? You F up your life to the point of no return, then you call for advice. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't I mean, how many houses advice. how many houses can you lose? <laughs> well it looks like it's gonna be two at least. And I don't need another woman. Like you these other guys, they they don't hear you. I, I can I can just hear it when you say Oh, they say, oh, well, yeah, uh, you know, I'll wait a while till I get another. No, 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 no. I hear what you're saying. I don't need a woman to make me complete. I want to walk on 20 acres by myself. Well, you're nowhere near that, losing two houses and giving up so much of your revenue to a female. You know, good luck being able to do that by your 50s, for God's sake. Wow. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.